everyone to whoever's around in every part of the world. I am Rochika Mehta and I am the editor of Hello Magazine. Welcome everyone. It's my privilege and honor to be associated with the Positivity Project and be to this evening present Dr. Dane Heal, who is here with us for a very powerful energy experience. Hello, Dr. Dane Heal. How Hello. are you doing? I am phenomenal. How are you? Very well, thank you. Dr. Dane actually needs no introduction because if I do start, I may not stop. But just for all those who've just logged in and would not like to know more about him, Dr. Dane has been one of the co-creators of Access Consciousness. He has also been a very internationally renowned author, speaker, and facilitator of change. That's right, doctor. I believe you've, you've changed many lives. You have changed people who've been in distress and turmoil professionally, uh, uh, personally, through the, who've gone through mental strains. You've on what I hear is that you pulled people out of death. Well, that's amazing. And is that all with the creativity of energy and all that you bring into everyone? Well, as it is my desire to do so, and it's always each person's choice. And yet what I realize is we have within us a far greater capacity to choose something different and to change than almost anybody realizes. And so my job is to do my best to bring that out in people and let them know that they do have choice and that things are changeable. You pick up the choice. Uh, Dr. Dean's sessions are an energetic synthesis of being that will help you transform, heal, and move into discovering a new uh, you. So over to you, Dr. Dean, this evening, the master of consciousness. Thank Just you. before we start, I would also like to thank all our partners uh, we have World Connect, we have the Positivity Project, Wellness Curated, T Gelf, and the Jindal Foundation. Thank you for joining us, Dr. Heer, and over to you for such and looking forward to a great and exhilarating session. Thank you. Thank you, Ruchika. And I would also like to thank everybody that made this happen and made this a possibility. And this stemmed from a conversation that I was fortunate to have a few weeks ago that um, was about a different conversation for India specifically and how we can move forward into creating a different possibility than what seems to be before us right now. One of the things that I've learned is that in periods of great change, there is always great possibility if we are willing to look from that perspective. And so um, I asked the ladies that put this together, these phenomenal creatures who are doing everything they can to create more positivity and more possibility in the world. I said, I have this weird ability that I guess I would say was gifted to me, if you will, 21 years ago now. And it's called energetic synthesis of being. And what it is, it's a way of energetically working with people and working with people's bodies. And what it does is it kind of pulls the parts of your being back to be available to you to access because living in this world, we're taught that whatever we are is not enough. It's not right. So we cut off many aspects of ourselves in an effort to try to fit in, in an effort to try to make reality work. And so um, what this is going to be today is an energetic session. And at certain points, I may not be talking. Uh, at certain points, uh, there may be, uh, like I move my hands in different directions just based on the energy. You know, I jokingly say I'm Italian because I move my hands when I talk too, because for me, energy moves through my body and my body moves. And, and um, to the point where when I was a little kid, I used to have ticks and twitches because I had so much energy in my body but nobody could tell me what to do with it. Well, I finally found an outlet for that. But what these sessions are is this, this sense, hopefully of more of a connection to what's true for you, but also more of a connection to the universe at large. Now, 
it is an energetic session. It's not somebody coming and massaging your muscles and digging their elbow into your back or, or giving you something to take. So, you know, there's been a physical transfer of something. This is an energetic transfer, but um, I hesitate. I dynamically hesitate to call it a transfer. It's more of an energetic opening. And, um, and when I first started doing these sessions, it was with one person on a table and there was an energy that came through and it was actually um, my best friend, the co-founder of Access Consciousness. And he said, uh, ask my body what it wants because he was coming to me for a session. He said, ask my body what it wants, follow the energy, you will know what to do. First time anybody in my life ever said, I would know something. And there was an energy that became available that quite literally saved his life in that first session that I now call ESB. Well, in the last 21 years, I've done hundreds of thousands of sessions and seen the possibilities that are actually available. Now, some of you, uh, you know, a lot of us in the world we live in, um, we don't have much time to listen to the whispers that our energetic sensitivity is. And we don't often tend to have a sense of space, especially now. What this is designed is to start on the road to changing that, okay? The session, I'm, the session is not going to be the sole answer for, for your life, but it may be a contribution. And for some of you, you may notice dynamic change. Some of you may notice just a little relaxation or space. However you notice it is okay. But also please recognize that whatever you get out of this session is going to, this is just the beginning of it. This is just like opening the door, the beginnings of opening the door. You'll really notice the effects of the session in, you'll start noticing it within the next few days. And then within the next few weeks, you'll notice really what it created in maybe the next several weeks. So please don't bother trying to figure out what happened because what happened is going to occur on so many levels that you can't really get it with your mind and that's part of the beauty of this so some of you may notice that it already has a sense of starting you may notice some energy in your body that wasn't there before um, or a sense of lightening or more openness less stress whatever it is what i'd ask you to do is to recognize you can't receive this session wrong and you can't receive it right. You can just receive it if you're willing to. So what I'm gonna ask you to do, if you would please, is lower all the walls and barriers. And also, you know that thing that we have of sort of this constant need to hold on to a stress where it's kind of like, we feel like if we let that go, we're gonna miss something and something terrible is going to happen. And what I found is, it's the fact that we carry that with us all the time that creates stressful things happening because we're always looking for the next problem or the next like major trauma that's going to occur. And part of that occurs because we're always looking for it. You know, you get what you seek, you know? And so, <clears throat> and you get more of what you focus on. So what I'd ask you to do is just for the time of this session is just let it melt a bit. And you may notice it's already starting to. And this session is, um, Yes, I'm sort of the mouthpiece or the, I don't know, the spigot for it, but it's kind of like when you turn on your tap at home, the water isn't coming from there, it's coming from someplace else. So I'm basically just a mouthpiece for the universe. And, and please also recognize and acknowledge your choice to be here, your choice to take your time, your choice to sign in, sign on, sign up, whatever it was that got you here, your choice to be viewing this right now. That's a choice you're making for you and a choice based on your awareness, whether you realize it or not. And most of the choices we make are actually not cognitive. And to the extent that we can start choosing for more awareness, our life works greater. So after this session also, you may see things in a different light. You may see people differently. Not all of it may necessarily be comfortable, but all of it will be more in line with your actual awareness of what is. Because the only time we create a difficulty is when we cut off our awareness. And so, as Ruchika said, I do this work and I'm co-creator of something called Access Consciousness. Consciousness, we have a definition for it. It's where everything exists and nothing is judged. 
it's also that space though where you can have total awareness even when it doesn't match other people's points of view so all the awarenesses you have that don't match other people's points of view and all the awarenesses you've had over the course of your life that didn't match other people's points of view so you thought you couldn't have them will you let that go now please thank you and yeah, some of you are noticing the peacocks in the backyard. I am very fortunate. I have a white peacock who lives here and several of his um, brothers and sisters and children. <laughs> so we have a lot of beautiful peacocks in my backyard. Um, how did I get so blessed and lucky? Okay, so um, in addition to lowering your walls and barriers, and, and please realize I'm just uh, talking right now to sort of let this start and it is, beginning. What I'd like to ask of you, um, I'd like to ask you this question, which is what I do uh, when I do one-on-one -on -one sessions. This just happens to be a few thousand people, still works. Um, and the question is, if you could have anything out of this, if you could have anything out of our time together today, what would it be? If you could have anything as the energy of your life and living, what would it be? If you could have anything as the space of your living and the space of your being, what would it be? See, your request and our collective requests actually determine the direction of the session. It's that contribution that you are uniquely that contributes to all of us. That is the gift you are here to be in this world, my beautiful friends. So allow yourself to take a deep breath in from the top of your head down to the tips of those cute, sweet, adorable little toes of yours. And one more. And you can close your eyes if you would like to. And if you would, just let this in. Let the universe contribute to you. Let the universe be a gift to you. And allow yourself to open to the awareness, the possibility that the universe actually is here gifting to you all the time. There's so much need in the world right now. I need money. I need to get over the stress. I need to have people like me. I need, I need, I need, I need, I need. What if just for a few moments you could go beyond it? And if you liked it for those few moments, you could maybe go beyond it for another few and another few. And if this session contributes to that at all, all you got to do is remember it, or some of you may want to actually go back and watch it again because it will meet you where you are in that moment. It will contribute to more of what you're already having and also open new doors. That's the nature of it. The session is based on consciousness and consciousness is what we are. It is the gift that we are in the world and it is constantly gifting to us and yet we tend to have our focus so narrow into fulfilling our needs as though if we don't continuously focus on our needs, they'll never be fulfilled. But what if in actuality, it's that continuous focusing on needs that continuously creates more needs? Everything is the opposite of what it appears to be. Nothing is the opposite of what it appears to be. I say again, everything is the opposite of what it appears to be. Nothing is the opposite of what it appears to be. Everything is the opposite of what it appears to be. Nothing is the opposite of what it appears to be. If we function from that as our lives and recognize that everything truly is the opposite of what it appears to be, and nothing is the opposite of what it appears to be, we start to have space where before there was none. You can even say that phrase five or six times when you have no space and it will take you out of the contraction and into the space and space is our natural state, my beautiful friends. Space is how we would be if we no longer bought into the idea 
that we had to be contracted in order to live here, in order to function in this reality. What if you could function rather than just within this reality? What if by some stroke of magic, and this is the perhaps the most challenging aspect of this entire session and conversation and what I've learned about life itself is there's so many choices beyond what we have considered reality. There's so many choices beyond what everybody else considers reality. And when you start to function from the question rather than the conclusion, when you start to function from the ask for possibilities rather than the dynamic, dynamic, dynamic insistence on needs and fulfilling needs, there opens up a space where your life becomes no longer about simply needs, but it becomes about possibilities, it becomes about being alive. And there's this sense of, of vibrancy that can come into our worlds. That's actually us. You know, birds never wake up in the morning and go, I'm having a bed feather day. I'm not going to sing today. And they sing, they fill the air with these, this beautiful cacophony of sounds as their contribution to all creatures. What is the contribution to all creatures that you are currently contributing? Just look back over the last day. What did your energy contribute to those around you? Was it joy? Was it possibilities? Was it lightness? Was it everything is the opposite of what it appears to be? Nothing is the opposite of what it appears to be. Let's go and let's create something different. Or was it a furtherance of the trauma, the drama, and the suffering? Was it an alignment and agreement with that or a resistance and reaction to that, which sticks you just as much? Our resistance and reaction does not create change. Anything you resist persists. Anything you fight against now owns you because you have to come down to its level to fight it. What if today is a day you could give up the fight? And it takes dynamic courage and it also takes a level of vulnerability, true vulnerability, which means being you warts and all, being you with no barriers, no need for image, no need for projection and expectation. True vulnerability is the greatest gift you can give yourself. True vulnerability is the greatest gift you can give the world. Because in that you get to truly be you. And here's the beautiful part, my beautiful friends. What if everything I'm speaking about is far easier than you think it can be? We get stuck in thinking as though it's a way to make things show up and actualize them, but it actually doesn't. We get stuck in thinking and then we just go around and around and around on the merry-go-round, except it's not very merry. The hamster wheel in our heads what if you can't think yourself into any of these energies that I'm speaking about, but what if you can ask for them all right now? If there's anything that I say today or any energy you happen to become aware of and you go, yes, that. Just do exactly that. Yes, that. I will have that, please. Dear universe, dear consciousness, please help. I will have it as soon as possible, but here's the caveat. I will have it and I am willing to change anything in order to have it knowing that whatever shows up as a result of that change will be greater than what was before. Allow yourself to know that you are willing to change because only in the willingness to change do you end the suffering you're currently experiencing. Only in the willingness to change can you go beyond limitation to possibilities. Can you go beyond need to the space of gratitude for what is? You have to be willing to change, my beautiful friends, or why are we here? And let's face it, for you guys who are watching this, you are a minority in the world, but you're a minority, a powerful minority. In fact, you are more powerful than the majority, meaning those of us who desire something different. I love the Positivity Project. This just thrills me to no end, creating more positivity in the world. Well, guess what? Those of us that desire that have so much more power than those of us that desire to perpetrate the negativity on everyone from behind the scenes most of the time or sometimes directly in your face. It's okay. You don't have to fight it. When you try to fight against the negativity, 
you're making yourself a chihuahua. When you don't have to fight against the negativity, you become a dragon and you soar above it all. And does a dragon ever need to fight a chihuahua? Why would a dragon fight a chihuahua? How dishonoring of the dragon. What if now's the time, even in the smallest of ways, to become the dragon you truly are that you know you've always been, that you just haven't seen a way to become. The beauty of this is it's not about seeing it. The whole thing about this ESB session is about possibilities for being that can just be chosen in this moment. All you got to do is choose and go, yes, I'll have it. And here's the other thing is we have this weird idea that we can either be spiritual or we can have money. What? That's why I'm more interested in consciousness than spirituality. And I know some of you may think those words are evil, but hear me out. Consciousness includes everything and judges nothing. Consciousness gives you total awareness of everything and everyone with no point of view, except an interesting point of view. No fixed point of view about anything or anyone. Could you imagine what it would be like to live that way? So what if you could have the consciousness you desire? And if you want to call it spirituality, fine. Spirituality just tends to be, have become a new religion where this is right and this is wrong. This is good and this is bad. And okay, but whatever you want to call it, that awareness that you have of something greater than, than three-dimensional reality, than, than the world we see around us, something that allows us to know that up here and all around us is, is this movement of energy and this movement of, of concepts and constructs and things that, that can come into being if we'll tap into it, if we'll allow it, if we'll ask for it. Because the way I perceive the universe is kind of like one of those movies where the little kid is looking up and there's all these moving colors and energies and lights and sounds and they morph into each other. And what I realize we are, one of the great gifts of us is, what we do is we'll get a sense of something we would like and it's our unique interaction with the universe. And I keep going up and down even though it's all around us, but it's sort of easy to perceive that way. It's our unique interaction. Then what we do is we bring it in and then we give voice to it. And we actually give life to it with our request. That's your job here, you aware of that? It's actually not a job, but hey, if you had another job of you know trying to change the world and change people and all that, that's a tough job. But if your job instead is something about tapping into the things that sound like they're awesome and fun and wonderful to have and finding a way to have them show up, doesn't that sound like more fun? And what if that's one of the greatest contributions you can be to this world? What if it's where you finally find peace? See. The difficulty is whenever you're functioning from a lie, you get heavier and you get more contracted. A lie always makes you heavier. But what's true, what's true, even if it's not something you've ever heard or thought or considered before, even if it's not something you've ever been in the presence of or the energy of or the space of before, what's true always makes you lighter. And to the best of my ability, I do my best to ask people questions so they can get to what is actually true for them and not one time. And I have worked with well over a million people at this point in my young life. I'm only 29 in my mind. <laughs> not one time in working with all of these people, not one time, not one time ever in any conversation, in any session, in any class, in any facilitation, has the problem been that the person was more limited than they thought they were? Not one time, always, every single time, the person is greater than they can imagine that they are and they're trying to pretend that they're less. How many areas of your life are you trying to pretend you're less right now? And what if we could allow that to melt right now? I'm gonna ask for an explosion from you right now. And for me, it looks like this, okay? Really simple, looks funny. I don't recommend doing it at, you know, family reunions and out at business lunches and such. But in a venue like this, hey, let's face it, this is already weird, okay? 
I'm here, you're there all around the world. And we're doing something together energetically to create a shift. That's weird. But the original meaning of weird was of spirit, faith, or destiny. And given that we're already on the weird bus or the weird train, let's just keep going. Okay, so I'm going to ask for an explosion from you, from you, for you, and from you for all of us. And we're going to do this on three. And basically what I'm going to ask of you, because we found that we have this energetic we, me and the mouse in my pocket, um, me, Gary Douglas, the founder of Access, the people that do Access Consciousness, found that there's actually a way where when you've got something and you you ever have a sense of there being something that you can change, like an energy that's stuck and you know you should be able to change it, but you can't seem to change it. Well, my job is to give people tools so they can change those things. One of my jobs, I have many jobs. Um, and this one, two, three thing is basically you just gather all the energy you can, just ask for it, and then you go one, two, three. Okay, and it's just like that. So I just did one for you, you're welcome no extra charge okay so we're gonna do this and what it is is to bust apart what doesn't allow you to have access to the world and reality that is beyond this one that you know that you haven't been able to actualize or show up one two three 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 and on four, three changes the past, four opens a door for future. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Now, if you're ever having a bad day, all you got to do is do some one, two, threes and one, two, three, fours. And there's not a specific number to do. Do it until the energy shifts. And just notice if you notice something when we did that. And I do realize, once again, I know I'm weird and I don't care. I live a charmed life because I'm willing to be weird now. I used to live a life of suffering because I wasn't willing to be as weird as I was, as weird as I came in. I tried to be normal forever. I tried to hide the things that were strange about me, the, the hopes and the dreams that I had. I tried to hide the weird energetic capacities I had because nobody else seemed to have them. How much of you have you been hiding, my beautiful friends? How much of you have you been hiding and how much of what you've been hiding is actually the magic that you are? Now, if you find that you're magic after this, yes, I have truly done my job because that's my real job, showing you your magic. That's what excites me. That's what makes me get up in the morning going, Yahoo, let's go, let's do this. But if you find that you're magic in some way or many ways, please let me know, number one, but please don't tell anybody else. Now, why do I say that? Let me put it this way. Don't tell most people. Because have you ever been able to do something and then you told somebody and then you couldn't seem to do it anymore? Most people will not get it. And guess what? That's okay. The only important part is that you get it that you start getting access to the magic you are, to the gift, because that magic that you are, and I call it magic, but it's actually you being you. We had the first International Being You Day on May 22nd. There's seven hours there. It's on my YouTube channel. You can go there and watch it, or you can go to beingyouday.com and watch it there. It's free. We're not promoting anything. It's just one of the gifts that I realized that I, along with a lot of other people who helped create it, could gift to you in the world as an invitation to you truly being you, whatever the heck that is. And spoiler alert, you have no clue what being you truly is. How do I know? Because I'm barely discovering what being me actually is. And I see this with hundreds of thousands of people. We think we are one thing. And a question I asked in a class recently is, are you willing to give up being who you think you are so you can be who you actually are? Are you willing to give up being you so you can be you? In other words, are you willing to give up being that conglomeration of points of view and projections about you and reference points about you and what you can and cannot do and can and cannot be so you can actually be the infinite being, the miraculous creature you actually be? 
If that's a yes, will you let go of everything that doesn't allow it, please? Right and wrong, good and bad, pot and pock, all nine shorts, boys and beyonds. Oh, my beautiful friends, it's happening. And please know that this is not, the words I am speaking are a direct emanation of the energy that I'm pulling out of your heads, okay? You may notice I don't have a prepared script. What I am speaking to is what I am getting from you. That's what I'm speaking to. That's what I'm putting words to. And I have done, I have listened to so many wonderful people speak where I was inspired many times. This is not a speech, my friends. This, with everything I'm saying and doing, and especially during a session like this, what I do is I'm very energetically congruent when I speak, meaning the conversation I'm having with you is not just words. The conversation that I'm having with you is a result of this energetic session and the doors that are being available to be opened if you choose. And it's not just a conversation with your mind, it's about every single thing I'm talking about, opening up that space for that to be a choice that you have as part of your reality and your world and your living, waking, breathing presence on this planet, beautiful you. Now is the time, my beautiful friends. You have been waiting for a very long time, whether you know it or not. And it's okay not to even know it. I guess I'm sensing a lot of you know it. Now is the time. Now is the time. Now is the time. And some of you go, now is the time for what? Let's find out. I just had to let you know that now is the time because a lot of you have been knowing something different should exist and could exist. A lot of you are actually the voice and the energy for what can exist that is beyond our current very interesting reality. Notice I said very interesting because what if you don't have to fight this reality to create a different one? What if you in not fighting it, can simply choose something different. I do realize in a country with far over a billion people that there are a lot of minds and a lot of chatter and a lot of people with lots of points of view. But have you ever acknowledged that there's also a lot of beauty in the earth? That during the lockdown, you could see the Himalayas for the first time in 30 years. Do you ever acknowledge that there's a beautiful planet underneath your feet that is desiring to contribute to you and most of the people are ignoring it? See, one of the great gifts that you can give yourself is to acknowledge that most of what goes on in your head does not, is not sourced within you. It actually comes from the outside because every thought, feeling and emotion, every judgment, every stress, every sense of hopelessness, every worry about money, every worry about being liked, every worry about relationship has a vibration to it. And we're broadcasting all the time. And we're the, we may know that, but what we don't realize is we're receiving broadcasts all the time. And the more populated the area is in which you live, the more of those things you're going to have slamming into your head all the time. One of the greatest gifts you can give yourself is to ask, who does this belong to and is this mine? To every thought, feeling, and emotion, every sense of yuck, stuck, every sense of hopelessness. And if you do it for three days, at the end of three days, you'll walk around like a, you're in a walking, talking meditation. And people often ask me, do you meditate? And I'm like, well, my life is a walking, talking meditation. And don't get me wrong, I love meditation. I love the idea of creating space and presence. 
whatever it takes. But oftentimes my meditation is going for a fast run, driving really fast. I like fast meditations too. See, because you start to realize that it's not about Here's, let me give you a different perspective that I'm hoping can be embraced. It's, it's not about shoving the world out. So much of what we're taught is the only way to have peace is to shove the world out. But when you do that, now you're alone in your little bubble, which is an, the antithesis of you as a being because you're an infinite being connected to everyone and everything. So can you really exist in a bubble or is that an artificial temporary creation? Let me tell you how to have total peace all the time. Rather than shoving out the world, allow the world in to move through you without it getting stuck within you and your body. Recognize you are a creature of oneness like every animal knows that it is because they don't think. And allow yourself to not have to resist the world anymore and not have to fight the world anymore. That's the way to start to have peace. And I know for some of you, perhaps many of the things that I've said, and definitely that one, may seem totally crazy, insane, too weird, not possible. I know I used to have that exact same point of view, so I totally understand. And it's totally okay for you to have that point of view. And it's totally okay for you to fight for that point of view if you want. I'm just here presenting a different possibility, my gift to you. Take it or leave it as you choose. You know, my beautiful friends, you know what's true for you. You know what's not. <clears throat> Excuse me. What if it's okay? What if it's actually okay to walk around being different, feeling different, not feeling connected to those really low level intense vibrations and energies, not even having to be connected to the suffering. One of the biggest lies we have all bought is that if we connect to people suffering and we suffer like they do, we're going to uplift them. How much of your life have you done that and does it actually work? Now, here's the thing about so many things that I say, when you live in an either or world, then you go, well, what am I just not gonna care about people? No, what I'm talking about with almost every single thing that I'm saying is the third unexplored option, not the either or that this world tries to put us into so we can fight for one side and against the other. No, what I'm talking about is if you were actually to not get down in the cesspool with someone and not get down in there to experience their suffering with them as though that is caring, you would be someone who would inspire them to know they didn't have to suffer because you're not suffering. That's a win-win, my beautiful friends, because not only are you lighter and happier in creating, and truly creating a change by how you're being in the world. But now they have an inspiration. And even if they don't know you personally, that energy that you contribute to our world contributes to more of that being in the world when you get over the need to suffer. That's one of our needs, by the way, so that we can feel connected to others in their suffering, even if we don't have that particular version of suffering. See, and I used to do the exact same thing, and I suffered a lot. I grew up with I, everybody that I'd ever known growing up was in some form of pain, suffering, trauma, or drama always. And most of them still are. And so I thought it was my duty to be that and thought it was my duty to be part of that. And what I realized was I would make myself unhappy and depressed to the point where I was going to end my life 21 years ago if things didn't change. Thank goodness for access consciousness and a session of access consciousness bars that I had that quite literally saved my life and diminished the stress in my world dynamically. But what I realized from that point was all of, well, not all, most of the suffering that I had inflicted on myself 
was how I learned to be from people I loved and how I was trying to heal it in them by becoming it. If somebody has just had quadruple bypass surgery, can you heal them by clogging up your heart? Or can you heal them by caring for them, being a space of the acknowledgement that change is possible by being a sense of joy, a sense of wonder that makes them want to live? What about that? What if now's the time for a completely different sense of you in the world? What if now is the time for opening a door that allows you to begin to recognize that number one, you are not alone. And number two, your suffering is no longer viable and contributory. Look at it for a moment. How many times have you suffered just like someone in your family? Did it ever, ever take away their suffering? Most of the things that we do like that are because we do it because we did it and it worked one time. And now we've done it 10 or 20,000 other times and it hasn't worked, but because it worked once and we don't see any other choice, we go back to that way of being. So all the suffering that you have been um, choosing, I know it's weird to think you would choose it. Everything in our lives is a choice, my beautiful friends, even though most people don't wanna hear it. But that's the only place where we can get to where we can change it. Because if you look as though the suffering is coming at you from the outside, you'll never be able to change it because there's too much of it coming at you and you're not the source of it. See. We don't have a choice for what goes on in the wide, wide world around us. We do, but let's look at what we do have is a choice to how we respond and what we choose to create beyond it. Are you willing to make that choice? Or is it more valuable to you to keep seeing why you can't, to keep proving that you can't so you can maintain the suffering that allows you to be normal, average, real, and the same as everyone else? The question really is, is like I said before, what is it that you are bestowing on the world with your choice of being on a daily basis? Are you gifting the world with a sense of possibilities? Are you gifting the world with a sense of joy? Are you gifting the world with a different perspective on the world that by the way, you don't have to tell anyone Nobody's going to listen anyway. Or are you gifting the world with more trauma and more drama? It's just a choice. Now, here's the other difficulty is India's had spiritual traditions and gurus for thousands of years, as you know better than I do. But let me tell you one of the challenges that has created is created the desire, the need, or the, the idea that there is someone outside of you that will do it for you and change you. And that your job is to be a good follower until you can find that person. My question is how well does it work? Does it actually work? Even if it worked thousands of years ago even if you've had many, 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 many lifetimes. And I love that I can say that because people in India know about other lifetimes. <laughs> Whether you believe in it or not is another story, but you won't think I'm totally crazy for bringing it up. But even if you've had many, many, many lifetimes where you tried to make that work, or maybe it worked one lifetime and you've had 10,000 others where it hasn't worked. Putting the source outside of you, like making me a source, for example, Dr. Dane will save me. Uh, that's not my job. I'm very clear that that is not my job. I will do everything I can to contribute, but until you're willing to choose, things cannot change. Until you are willing to choose, things cannot change. Until you are willing to choose, things cannot change. And when you do, and if you should choose to choose, 
everything will change and it will occur quicker and easier than you ever thought it would. And the only difficulty at that point is gonna be recognizing how weird and how magical you are because our greatest fear is not that we are weak and terrible. Our greatest fear is that we are powerful beyond measure, which actually isn't fear, it's excitement. We've just misidentified and misapplied it. So how much choice have you been hiding from you? How much power have you been hiding from you? How much miraculousness and magic and capacity to change have you been hiding from you? And all of your projections, expectations, separations, judgments, and rejections about you, about that, and about this session being the answer rather than the, the invitation for you knowing that you are the only answer that can exist for you as it is for all of us and empowering yourself in the only way that will actually work to actualize a far greater future Will you destroy and uncreate it, please? Right and wrong, good and bad, pot and pock, all nine shorts, boys and beyond. That's the access consciousness clearing statement. I wasn't going to use it because a lot of you have never met me or access before. And by the way, thank you for being here. And I do realize I may be pushing some of your buttons with my conversation, but you know what? If some of those buttons will serve you dynamically in the future, so if you get activated by something I said, that's okay. Just ask, what was he trying to tell me that I didn't want to hear? Because I see no wrongness in you. None. You are not wrong, my beautiful friends. I see no wrongness in you. None. I say that again, none. And I know what it is to walk through life with this sense of wrongness, feeling like it weighs you down all the time. What if the idea that you're wrong is one of the greatest lies you've ever bought? And if anything I've said in your world is indicated that I think you're wrong or you're not right for what you're choosing, please know that is not what I am saying at all. But it is a great way of maintaining what you had in place before by resisting what I am inviting you to. But what if it's maybe exactly those things that is why you decided to be here today for this session. What are you and what are you capable of that you've never acknowledged before? What capacity, what brilliance energetically do you have that you've never acknowledged before? What choices are available to you that you've never considered? What else is possible now for you that's never been possible before? How much fun can you have that you never imagined you could? The only question is, are you willing to be different enough? And are you willing to change into what you actually are? And allow yourself to let go of what you have been pretending to be and thinking you are and knowing that you must be that hasn't actually been working for you. Now is the time, should you choose, my beautiful friends. There's a different world begging to be created. I can't do it all on my own. The world needs you to recognize that a different reality is here to be chosen. Because if you don't, we are all going to be stuck with the old reality that we had before that wasn't working for any of us. The great gift of this entire year and a half has been that normal is gone, which means, and the way to navigate when normal is gone is begin to ask more questions. Like I just gave you a whole lot of them. I would highly suggest going back, listening to this live or Zoom again and write them down. Now, in being invited, and I thank, again, all of the amazing people that invited me to do this. See, can you imagine from their perspective, they're like, do something nice, you out of control wizard. Make people feel good. Well, the thing that I've recognized is even greater than making people feel good is allowing people more choice and allowing people to become more aware, even if sometimes it's a little uncomfortable for a while. And if it is in any way, and it may or may not be, 
there's thousands of you all having a different experience. <laughs> That's the beauty of this. All I want to let you know is if it is uncomfortable in any way, based on something I said or an energy that I am being or inviting or being with this session with us all, please recognize that that may go what what I've noticed is that's the, um, I can't think of the word right now, but that's sort of the, it may get crunchy for a while, but that always opens up into something that is more beautiful than you imagine could be. See, in the last 21 years, I have been on this exploration of how many beautiful spaces of being can we open up even that no especially those that nobody else know can exist. And that for me has been pretty much what I have devoted my life to, if you will. How many more spaces of possibility? What else is possible that I never considered? And this is one that if you get it at one point, it's like waking up in a whole different world. You relate to things and people differently. And if you've ever had that, this is what I'm inviting where you relate to people more gently and more kindly and where you have more of a sense of space and you like yourself more and you like other people more. And there's a sense of everything being okay and nothing being wrong. And there's a sense that even in the, the darkest time, there's a sense of possibility and hope and the awareness that if that's showing up, then major change is right after it. And if you please, 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 if you ever get to a point where you're like, I'm just done, I can't do it anymore, I want to give up, please, please do me one favor, please just take two more steps. Because that's always the time. It truly is darkest before the dawn. That is always the time where the most massive breakthrough occurs. And your life after that you can pinpoint that your life after that is totally different than your life was before that. And this can be part of the adventure is for me, part of the adventure of being alive, continuously exploring new spaces and new ways of being with things where it's like, okay, how can we do this differently and have more fun? How can we do this differently and create more? How can we do this differently and create more change? How about you? So I asked you at the very beginning, if you could have anything out of this, what would it be? Do you have a sense of having more space for whatever that was? Now don't think about it. See, thinking is the enemy of possibilities. Thinking is also the enemy of happiness. Oh, guess what? Thinking is also the enemy of creation. And you're like, yes, but I think a lot. I'm like, I know, I used to think a lot too. Now I don't have enough brain cells. That's okay. So in our last few minutes here, what I'd like you to do, I'm gonna have you take one more deep breath in from the top of your head down to the tips of those cute, sweet, adorable little toes of yours. <sighs> Thanking your beautiful body for being the gift that it is. And we're going to transition slightly and you may or may not notice a difference in either way, it doesn't actually matter at all into something I call ESC, which is energetic synthesis of communion, which is actually about having a space of being with the earth and every molecule on and beyond this planet. Einstein tells us that every molecule has consciousness or told us, <laughs> maybe still telling us in another body, who knows? But every molecule has consciousness, but not only that, what that consciousness allows is an awareness of every other molecule. If you've ever heard about the idea of a holographic universe, it means that within every structure, within every cell, let's say, or within every molecule, is the awareness of the entire universe. Now that is just mind-blowing on purpose. It's beautiful. It's amazing. It's phenomenal. But I want to use it here as the awareness that you are far more connected than you know, my beautiful friends. Far more connected to everything, far more connected to the consciousness of the universe. And that is the gift. I'd like you to allow your awareness to seep down into the earth 
while maintaining a sense of connection with your body and and feeling if you're lying down, feel your body on the table, or if you're not, feel your feet on the floor and your butt on the seat. And just notice your body and also notice the earth simultaneously. However you do, you could drop an energy line down from your heart into the earth if that works for you. Or you could expand out and out and out, maybe a mile, 10 miles, 20 miles, or shall we say kilometers, 1, 10, 20, 100, 1,000, 10,000, 20,000 kilometers in all directions. And notice the space of the earth that is there as you have a connection with your body. And however you sense the earth, even though we don't often take the time to communicate with this beautiful conscious creature underneath our feet, do you notice that the vibration of your body and the vibration of the earth are very similar? What if now is the time to have that sense of communion with the earth? The sense that the earth is there and we are there. Acknowledge the gift that this beautiful being is and that it is contributing all the time. And if you will, just say, hey, earth, hi, I'm here. Sorry, I didn't quite recognize that I had not probably ever really acknowledged you in the way that I know that I can. I am here and I will do better. And I realize there are a lot of people that don't, that, that just want to take from you, but I would like to be a steward, please. Please show me how. And please also contribute to this journey that I'm asking to be on. Please contribute to ease and joy and exuberant expression and abundance, please. And ask right now, Earth, what can I contribute to you? And don't be surprised if the earth fills you with energy because one of the greatest contributions you can be is actually receiving from other conscious beings. When someone is gifting all the time, think about it. How many times have you gone to give and give and give to somebody and they never receive it and you feel totally invalidated for being that gift? Guess what? That's what's going on with the earth too. And having just a few thousand of us be willing to turn our our eyes, our energetic eyes and awareness down to this beautiful planet and acknowledge it can change its entire sense of being and recognize that the gifts it is giving are truly being received. Okay, my beautiful friends, we are winding down. You can feel free to open your eyes or not. And some of you will probably have loved this session. Some of you will have hated it. Some of you will have been like, I didn't feel nothing. And you know what? That's okay. It's not about what you feel. And when I first started receiving energy work, I didn't feel a thing. It took me months upon months upon months. So just know you're not wrong still. No matter how you experience this, you are not wrong. If you take nothing else away other than the vague possibility that you are not wrong. From my point of view, this has been a success. So I would like to thank you, I'd like to thank the Positivity Project and all of uh, the amazing co-creators of this that allowed me to come and harass you, I mean, contribute to you for the last hour. And please recognize that you truly being you are the gift, the change, and the possibility this world requires. This session, if anything, is hopefully a beginning. It is by far not the end. It is one other step in a very long journey, but the journey hopefully can now be less about suffering, more about what would you like to choose, more about having a sense of possibilities, so lastly, what I'd like you to do is I'd like you to get the sense of if you had a magic wand or if you had me or some magical creature at your side, if you could have anything as your life in the next two to five years, what would it be? And just get the sense of the energy and the space, like having ease with money, for example, ease with the insanity in the world to where it felt like it didn't affect you, ease with being as different as you are, wonderful friendships, time to do what you want, money to do what you wanted, 
doing something that was contributing to earth and the people on it, doing something that was fun, that created money for you, and actually having a sense of peace and ease and joy in your life, knowing that no matter what came at you, you could handle it and that you were greater than that and that everything that looked like a problem actually leads to a possibility. Just get the sense of that for a moment. I do realize I did that very quickly, but I did it quickly on purpose so you wouldn't think too much because as soon as I bring it up, you get the energy, which is what I'm interested in because you're far quicker than you think you are. And now what I'd like you to do is ask for that energy as your life, okay? And say, consciousness, universe, please help. Earth, please help. All the elements of consciousness, please help. I'm willing to do anything. I'm willing to be anything. I'm willing to change anything. I'm willing to lose anything. I'm willing to lose anyone. I'm willing to gain anything. I'm willing to gain anyone. Please, this is what I'm asking for. So be it. Now, wherever you perceive that, if you perceive that somewhere in the future, some of you perceive it a long ways off in the future, do this. Let's see how it works. Just ask to bring that energy here now. Now, anything that feels like that energy, do it. And it will be the beginning of creating that as your life and living. And I can think of no greater gift to this planet than you actually enjoying being alive. The planet requires more laughter, more kindness, more joy, more gratitude, more sense of possibilities. And you, my beautiful friends, can be the source for that, the contribution to that, and the invitation to that, like few people on this planet. Thank you so much for being with me today. Namaste.